Thank you very much, Erica and Brandon, for accepting uh, the interview today. Cool. Thanks We're for really having us. We're excited to have two of you talking about your air park experience. Can you introduce yourself first? Yeah. So my name is Brandon Zangwill. Um, been flying for the last five or six years or so, um, primarily in this area, and just fell in love with it from the very beginning. And it's kind of just been the centerpiece of all of my hobbies and interests since that point. And uh, this one over here just kind of makes that even more so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name's Erica. I um, have been flying for what, three years now? Yeah. Little, little over three years. Um, this guy over here got me into becoming a pilot. I've always been fascinated at, with, you know, jets flying overhead and um, never thought it would be possible to actually pursue becoming a pilot. So um, he took me on our second date to Hilton Head. He flew us in a 172, like the plane behind us. And uh, literally since we left the ground, I was, I was head over heels in love. So um, I got my private pilot and my, I first started with my tail wheel, got my tail wheel endorsement. Then I got my private pilot. And then from there I uh, went straight into instrument training. So. Yep. And I've been pretty much pushing her along through the instrument stuff, but she's been right there wanting to do it. Um, she always, you know, wants us to, to move forward and keep pushing. So along the same line, um, I've got my tail wheel and um, seaplane was just for fun, but it's a great one to get if anyone's interested and in working on commercial and eventually we'll both get to the flight instructor level and things of that nature. So. Oh wow, that's, that's a great goal yeah. uh, for the future. I mean, I, I personally feel like instrument rating is very important for safety and, you know, and also give you more, you know, flexibility and freedom. Oh yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. And then eventually you guys get like commercial and CFI, that's fantastic. That's yep. our goal. Yeah. <laughs> the instrument changed our flying considerably, yeah. being able to get that. That's right. Like, wh what drove you to uh, consider buying a house here? We went to a couple of fly-ins, uh, one of which was here at Long Island Air Park, and just fell absolutely in love with the people, with the community, with the, um, the fact that you can have your own hangar and you can just pull your airplane out and take, take off on uh, basically in your backyard. So that kind of drew us in. First and foremost is the community. Um, everybody here is just so incredibly nice and um, has welcomed us with open arms. So, yeah. And since you know getting into flying, uh, one of the biggest gripes that regardless of where I may have been or people I've spoken to is uh, how difficult it usually is to kind of intertwine your life with flying and making time for all of it. Um, finding hangar space, especially in the Charlotte area, is really cumbersome. Um, so when we came up here and we saw how the various air park communities live and the, um, how much the, the community social life is really around airplanes, um, plus the ease of, like she said, having your own hangar, it just kind of made sense for us that if we could make that happen, that was really the way that we wanted to go. Um, and, you know, being able to eventually raise children around that environment and have them hopefully take after us and learn to fly real young was kind of a, a bonus. And we also happen to be expecting, so. Yeah, yeah. Again. <laughs> thank, thank you. Great news. Uh, we're going to have a young aviator pretty soon. Right? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> he always jokes if they're not into aviation, he's uh, taking the receipt and returning yeah. them. <laughs> Go right on back. <laughs> you guys have been moving, you know, in here for a few weeks already. So, you know, how do you feel about it? Like, how do you like it so far? Love it. There's re really the only negative is the fact that we are a little bit further away than what we were used to, whether it be a grocery store or just regular shopping and uh, you know errands that you run on a daily basis. But excluding that, it's really been wonderful. Yeah, and we we actually looked at Long or Lake Norman Air Park versus Long Island Air Park, and as you know, Lake Norman Air Park is a lot closer uh, in vicinity to everything, you know, shopping and people, civilization. Um, but this, I mean, this really isn't all that bad and we're already starting to get used to it. It's what, 13 minutes to the grocery store? Yeah, yeah, there's some that. new, new uh, stores that have opened up recently, a little bit closer. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, we got the benefit of having a, a grass strip instead of, you know, a paved, you know, we give up some instrument approaches and stuff. <laughs> we'll drive a little bit further. And fuel, yeah. fuel on the field here, but that's fine. But other than that, it, it's really wonderful being out here. Um, we came from the uptown area, so it's an entirely different lifestyle. 
one of the biggest reasons I wanted to live here is because it had the lake and you can kind of have the best of both worlds. You have the lake and then you have the runway and so everybody here has boats. You don't even necessarily have to have your own boat because um, people love to share the experience of boating just like they do aviation. So. And there's a private marina for the community, so that's a yeah. nice little bonus. Um, that, one, um, that one belongs to you guys? Yeah, so if you take off on runway five, right as you get to the end of the runway, it kind of drops off uh, out over the lake, and uh, there's a little, I don't know, 30 some odd slips mm -hmm. of uh, just boats for the community, so yeah. Oh, okay, so everybody can use it. Um, just us, but. Yeah, just in the community, oh. and they're deeded for specific houses. Okay. So like, we, we actually don't have a boat slip, um, mm -hmm. but for those of us that don't have one, there's actually a, um, a boat ramp for the community right around the corner from us. Perfect. So. You got everything in one spot. Exactly. Literally, <laughs> yeah. You don't have to have to do like multiple houses, like one for lake, one for... Exactly. Uh, for and we have mall. donkeys and horses on the way here, <laughs> yeah. so we can stop and pet them. <laughs> Agriculture, lakes, yeah. and flying. Yeah, okay. and really cool people. That, like I said, I can't stress that enough. The people are so wonderful here. And it's not like um, prohibitively expensive, like, you know, compared with people's uh, perception. Um, especially when you're looking at, you know, what's within an hour's drive. I mean, we're relatively close to Asheville. There's a lot of expensive properties there. Um, Cornelius area, even, even Charlotte in itself. Um, there are homes that are way, way more um, <laughs> unaffordable, might be a good term, than what, what's up here. So is it still possible? Absolutely. Um, you find land and you can build whatever whatever your budget can afford. And there's, there's homes of all various sizes and, and types in this community and, and surrounding area. So yeah. Absolutely. We've wanted to live here for at least three years and have been looking nonstop on, you know, all of our realtor um, on the listing sites and whatnot. So we've seen everything from just plots of land for going for 200,000 to in the millions. So, you know, there's something for everyone, um, but lots are definitely going quick. And so is uh, the land around us. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm so glad you guys, you know, bought this one because given the Charlotte real estate market is booming so much, yes. um, yeah, it is pretty competitive right now. We lucked out. Yes, for we sure. did. What's the next step for you? Like, so it's interesting. You know, what you see behind us is actually our neighbors' airplanes. Okay. Um, so in the sh the short future here, or I guess soon to be future, we really would like to get our own. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, we're just being good neighbors and letting people store planes that maybe they don't have space in their hangars, or maybe they don't have a hangar yet. Um, but yeah, we, we would love to add some more ratings and do some fun flying seaplanes and things like the that. The market is so hot right now for buying airplanes as it is for cars and houses. So we haven't really had the, uh, the, the good Luck. fortune of finding any, what we're looking for, which is a Comanche 260B specific. Or C, we'll take a C Or a C too. would be great, yeah. But um, we're, we're looking for that extra room in the back and the useful load, of course, um, but it has that third row, um, which we don't plan to use for seating, but having baggage and- Strollers. And that extra window adds a lot, yes, yeah, strollers. Uh, the extra window adds a lot of uh, light, and for those that are claustrophobic, it might make them feel more comfortable as passengers, so. I guess the range is pretty good as well. Yeah, That's exactly it's right. got great fuel uh, economy, and you can add tip tanks if you really wanted to, but it's not even necessary, so. Do you have any advice to the younger pilots? I would say don't feel like you can't, just because, like you said, there's a lot of seasoned pilots, whether in an air park community or just the, the aviation community in general. Um, the, I mean, we are definitely the minority as far as the, the age bracket in this community. Um, there's a couple that are you know, somewhat similar in age, but for the vast majority, it is um, more of an older uh, group, but that does not mean you can't get involved. Uh, you know, the aviation community as a whole is extremely accepting and friendly. And that's really all that we've found since we've been here. Um, so if that's really what you want, you set a goal for it like anything else in life and just strive towards it and keep your eyes open for a good opportunity. Really, that's what happened to us. Like you said, we've wanted to be here for years and it's just something came up that we were able to make work. Anything's possible. Um, you know, like Brandon said, there's, we wanted this for years and though it didn't work out in the beginning and we actually thought it would be impossible mm -hmm. to get you know either land or a home here that we could afford uh, it turned out that that wasn't the case so um, don't get your hopes up and keep uh, keep keep your eye out on the MLS and 
um, don't throw the idea of um, buying land and building on it out of the out of the picture so I'll also add like anything else in life a lot of it is word of mouth whether uh, whether you're trying to find a job or you're trying to find a house it's all kind of the same situation so you know in our in our scenario EAA 309 was kind of our introduction into this community and um, we yep Pablo was a, yep. <laughs> a huge component um, inviting us into that group and getting involved in, in this area because like I said we were from Charlotte so this is a little bit further away but um, getting involved in that aviation community and getting to know some of the the neighbors in this community is really what helped us out getting in here so just keep your options open and get involved I forgot to introduce uh, a little bit more interesting background for um, you know, Erica and Brandon actually the um, circumnavigate U.S. I can talk over some of the overarching basic learnings. I'll let her touch on some of the exciting items that she wants to, to share. But um, from a planning perspective, plan more time than you think. That was one of the big takeaways for us is, like you said, it took us two weeks, but we very easily would have enjoyed three a lot more. Not because obviously more time off from work is great, but um, you don't feel like you're always on the go if you have more time planned than what you really need. You have the time to stop and kind of enjoy where you may be. And just like in, in aviation all the time, um, things are going to come up, whether it's maintenance, weather, whatever. Um, so I would say plan for more time. Um, try to minimize the items you take with you. It makes it just easier, um, not even from a center of gravity or weight and balance planning aspect, but just you don't think about when you get to where you're going for the night, unpacking everything and then repacking it the next day. It makes things a lot simpler. Um, other than that, I would say just pick some of the places that you've seen that have always kind of you know captured an interest in you. Um, it's not a one and done trip. You'll have plenty of opportunities if, you, uh, if it's your goal. So what about you about exciting times? Well, I should have prefaced it that it wasn't technically supposed to be a whole sightseeing trip. We kind of factored right. that in. Um, I was actually working on my instrument reading and I figured, you know, why just uh, why just fly approaches in the local area? Why not actually do it in a round robin around the United States and knock all the hours out? It was like the perfect amount of hours um, that I needed to fulfill that requirement. So we, uh, we planned it around seeing family, around seeing things that we haven't seen before, going to places we haven't been. Um, and I would say for me, the highlights, the number one highlight for me was the Hudson River Corridor. Um, it was overwhelming, to say the least. Just so beautiful. Uh, skyscrapers, you know, on both sides. And I grew up there, so oh, you did. I did. And so seeing that kind of, yeah. seeing that perspective of the city was was really unique. And awesome. hopefully the APC was uh, nice enough. Oh, they're they fantastic. Were they were so nice. And right. um, we were the only, I think we were the only plane in the sky that day. So yeah. we were really lucky. Another experience on that trip that really left an impression was Mackinac. Uh, the approach mm -hmm. into Mackinac Island was, it was amazing. Uh, something out of a book. But, um, and even going, like taking tours along the island was really fun. It's horse and carriage only. No, no cars, car. no trains, no boats, no nothing. Well, I don't know about boats, probably boats. You can take a boat to the island. Yeah, <laughs> but, um, but it's like very back to basics. Um, really quaint. Uh, I also really liked, surprisingly, Sheridan, Wyoming, oh, yeah. which was so random because we actually hit some turbulence, some severe, it was a Sigmet in- We uh, didn't hit it. We stopped. Well, we didn't hit it, yeah. yeah. We didn't hit it, but we, we uh, encountered a Sigmet and we ended up just uh, detouring into Sheridan and that was really fun. Catalina Island. Yeah. That was, it's the airport in the sky. We did. Yeah. yeah. I let oh him. Birth. It was, yeah, I mean, it can be. It definitely can be. The biggest thing to remember, you know, anytime you're landing on top of like a mesa yeah. or uh, an elevated island is you're going to get downdrafts mm -hmm. right as you come onto the short final. Yeah, that was the day I got to fly. That was my birthday. Oh. So <laughs> she handed over the controls for that day uh, instead of just playing safety pilot. I wasn't very generous on that trip. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So yeah, that was fun. For me, I've always had an interest in getting to places that you can't get to without an airplane or a boat. Um, so you think of, you know, I guess Jekyll Island is one of them. Um, Mackinac has always been on the list. Catalina, things like that. So 
for me, those were really the exciting times. Um, there was a lot of stuff that we, we wanted to add to, but like she said, the main goal of the trip was hours and experience, which we got a ton of experience. A ton of experience. Um, from high density altitude days to mountain flying a little bit to utilizing oxygen to islands to anything to crazy calls about mid-air collisions yeah. and locating downed aircraft and yeah. uh you'll learn a lot more than you ever really anticipated flying out of the country in and out of the country we flew into mexico and canada and mm -hmm. canada wasn't anything special but mexico you had to actually cancel flight following and you're on your own so to speak once you enter their <laughs> territory <laughs> So, um, yeah, I've never flown out of, uh, to Mexico and it must be a adventure. Um, we were only there for a couple minutes. Yeah. <laughs> we just, just dipped our wing. We just dipped our wing. Dipped in. our oh, wings in, yeah. We didn't land. <laughs> I'm sure, you know, everybody learned a lot from two of you and um, we didn't enjoy it. Well, we're Thank happy to have you here. Thank you for having us. Thank you for watching. If you like my channel, click the subscribe button and I'll see you next time.